we conclude today the 15th letter. In this letter, we're getting to know ourselves very intimately, deeply, the powers of our soul, that our powers of our soul come from the divine, that God has blown into us, into a, a part of him. So as he has 10 divine attributes, we have 10 powers of the soul. Now, what we have studied till now was really an element of the soul that's called the nefesh hamaskelis, which means the intellectual soul. That intellectual soul is um, guided by, you know, in, but guided by intellect, guiding the emotions, something that we all have capacity, that we can inspire our emotions to act in accordance to that which we understand. What, what, what we learned till now about this soul, this soul that comes actually from klipa, meaning that there's, it's not pure godliness at all. It's human. And human means a mixture of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Or so, well, forget about the ugly. The good and the bad. That's what klipa snoika is, a mixture. So there's a mixture here. Of course, the Altair have explained to us how we use the good element of the nefesh and the intellectual soul, to allow us uh, to allow us to use it in, in a purposeful, meaningful way. And that was a parent teaching a child or a teacher teaching a student was the, the metaphor that we used. And of all of the powers of the soul that we engage in, that are actually necessary to use in order to be a good teacher or a good parent. In order to um, influence, inspire, help, guide the child or the student. And that's what we learn till now. So that rational soul is a lower level soul. I mean, truth be said that if we just follow this teaching and, and lived with this element, that would be uh, quite an achievement, what we've learned previously. However, we're now going into another element of our being, and that's a higher level soul, and that's the godly soul that's literally a part of God. Now, even though we spoke about, again, previously previous classes about the rational soul, the nefesh um, and it has, again, powers of the soul, but the distinction is, it's about, you know, the desire that a parent has to connect with their child and to guide their child or a teacher to a student. This part that is literally a part of God is a deeper, more internal um, uh, form of connection of the soul as opposed to, and therefore using a, a different quality of the same powers of the soul, but in a different manner, because this is the godly soul. Therefore, the intent over here or the focus, the, the concentration over here would be solely for the sake of God. Now, a parent for a child is not solely for the sake of God. It's for their own sake and their desire. Same likewise with a student, with a teacher to a student. So it's not, you know, concentrated purely on godliness. There's an element of it, of course. But this is that it is nothing but godly qualities. In other words, you know, when you're inspiring your child, influencing your child, it's not a love for your child, which is great and, and wonderful. And that should be there. But this that we're speaking about now from the godly soul, it's about one's love for God um, that expresses and the great desire that a person has that they want to cleave to God. So why are they acting kind? Not out of a desire to give something to another, which is, again, beautiful, right? We're just taking it to a different dimension now. 
but it's in order to cleave to God. In other words, I'm kind because that's what, you know, says cleave unto God's attributes. God is kind. Oh, so I want to cleave to him and be like him. So therefore I am kind. Right. So just as God is compassionate, so too we desire to be compassionate. So it's motivated with the desire to cleave to God. Again, that's a, a much deeper internal um, <coughs> motivation as opposed to, you know, you, you love your kid and you want to do something wonderful for them, right? Um, but this is purely directive for godly things. And again, the Nevesh Amaskelis doesn't mean that there isn't a godly element in it because, you know, of course, inspiring your child or inspiring a student and guiding them and helping them, of course, is a beautiful and wonderful and good thing. We're talking here, though, what is the desire of your soul? So your desire of your soul is, you know, because of the inherent love that you have for your child. So you, you want to give them something. You want to be kind to them. You want to... Uh, give them a teachings or, or whatever it is you know that you're giving to um, enhance their lives. So that's not solely or purely towards God, right? So that's Chesed, what it means because you want to cleave to God. So how does Gvura, the attribute of Gvura, express itself? Which the internal aspect of Gvura is fear. Uh, that you experience it only for godly causes. So the author Rebbe says, for example, um, to chastise the wicked, you know, which is interesting. In other words, to chastise the wicked because the Torah says so, right? Or punishment if you're, you know, a judge and you have to administer a punishment, you know, back in the day when, uh, when the Jewish courts of law had that um, jurisdiction. So you're doing it solely because... That's what God wants of you. So you're acting that way, you know, often as a parent, right? You might be gvura dig towards your child. You may be chastising ch your child. There might be a little lot of frustration, if not a lot, right? So here, what does it mean godly? Um, godly means that it is because Torah says, states as such. That's in respect to others would be the mida, the attribute of gvura, of strength, of of <clears throat> that another would be inner strength, that the things that you are permitted to engage in, you sanctify yourself and you uh, limit it, right, in order to rein in your negative inclination, right, by the fact that you know. Uh, we've spoken about this previously, that if you delay a satisfaction to yourself, a pleasure for yourself, five minutes, you might think, well, what's the big difference? Five minutes later, I'm going to have that pleasure. No, it's huge. You've activated, and you do that for the sake of God, right? You do it for the sake of God, to serve God, that by, in that five minutes, that I am not eating, or I'm not engaging in my, you know, my social media for five minutes, I've held back. I made a fence around the Torah, right? Um, that's coming out of a sense of respect, fear, awe of God, that you're creating a fence around in order to hold you back from something. That, well, it might be not good for you, or even if it's, you know, you got to eat, you got to have strength, it is good for you, but holding yourself back is um, sanctifying yourself with which that and that which is permitted, that's an act of kvura, an act of inner strength to be able to withhold and to do that. And when you do that for the sake of heaven, we're, then that's an expression of the godly soul's power of kvura. And then we go to tiferes. Tiferes means beauty. So we spoke about that as being compassion, compassion to another um, when it comes to the, the rational soul. And that is compassion towards another that's inherent to the soul. And it, you know, is that a good thing, a beautiful thing? Absolutely. Is it directed to God? No. It could be, not necessarily, right? 
not necessarily in the attribute itself. But here, when we speak about the fair's beauty, so it means glorifying God, beautifying God, so to speak, cleaving to him with praises, like in prayer, thoughtful meditation, not empty words, but words that are, you know, to that are in order to uh, to connect to God. That would be Tiferis. Now beautifying, yeah, beautifying um, my um, connection to God. And then we have Netzach. Netzach means triumph, endurance. This means to triumph and to endure anything that is holding you back from serving God and cleaving to Him. Remember, we're talking about the attributes and the basic idea of the of of our godly attributes or powers of the soul is to be like God, to cleave to Him. So, Netzach means to be triumphant over those things that are holding me back, that are not allowing me to cleave to God. Those things that are within me, right, um, or those things that are outside of me. So, for example, King David was very, tri he was, you know, used his attribute or power of Netzach to battle wars for the sake of God, not for his own self-glory. So, likewise, if we are battling something, right, not for our own, you know, glory, usually, you know, that's why a king goes to war for his own self-glory. But here it's, no, 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 no. You're triumphant. You endure. You bat, wage the battle to overcome for the sake of connecting to God. Then we have hide. Hide means to acknowledge. When do you acknowledge something? When something is greater than you transcendent of you so here it is about being self-effacing and acknowledging god that god animates and creates everything and the truth is everything before him is nothing it's not just it's just but him that's true self-effacement and through the fact that we don't comprehend everything and it's truly even even to comprehend the the concept of everything nothing before that's nothing before him he does the only reality um it's not difficult to comprehend that fully of course but the, the fact that we acknowledge it and we genuinely give ourselves over to that absolute truth that is a humility of height of acknowledging that which is greater than us and as a result, the word hoid also means to be made. That means to, from acknowledgement, means to express gratitude as a result <laughs> of the great favors that God bestows upon us. See how everything is directed towards God here in this, in the, in the godly soul. So from that humility, you know, uh, just parenthetically, I'm saying this now that um, when we. Um, When we're full of ourselves, so we don't want to uh, uh, acknowledge something transcendent of us, God, and therefore we have expectations from God and from others. Expecting, I'm expecting a nice, beautiful day. I'm expecting, a, you know, having wonderful things showered upon me today, from above and from you, right? That's not hard, right? That's not acknowledging something transcendent. And really, there's nothing but else but God. And therefore, in that sense, there's no sense of self being, being deserving. And if you're not deserving, you're not expecting. And therefore, you're capable of now acknowledging and appreciating and having gratitude for everything that's bestowed upon you. And we 
you think about it, there's a lot, right? And therefore, we would praise God for that. And the word hoid also means majesty and splendor. We would then bring out the splendor of God. That, wow, look what you have bestowed upon me, acknowledging that which is, and, and being uh, grateful for it. And therefore, bringing out the splendor of God as a result. That's all part of hoid in that one word. Then we come to Yisoyed. Yisoyed means foundation. As it says, it's Oilam, the righteous are the foundation of the world. Hmm. What does this mean? Well, is the soul is bound up with the foundation of life, with God. I'm just, you know, that that part of the that we're connected to the foundation of life, God Almighty. And, and and therefore having a wondrous delight and a pleasure in the divine. In the divine, having that immense pleasure of connection. That's what you say is. As we explained, you saw from the rational soul was the connection that the parent or the teacher makes to the student, you know, teaching eye to eye, and therefore there's a connection. And you feed off, the more there is a sense of connection, the greater are, is the giving of, of the teachings, of the wisdom, and the more of, the, of it is actually absorbed by the student because of that sense of connection. Right Here it is in the divine light, in the divine manner of the divine soul. So, of a sense of a real deep, profound connection, a foundational one. Um, and that creates a great desire and delight to connect. Connect to who? To God. And then finally, Malchus. The attribute of Malchus is the uh, sovereignty, which means an acceptance of God's sovereignty, having the yoke upon us. God is king, and we're here as a servant to the master, out of a sense of awe, sense of respect, fear. So those are the seven emotive attributes of the divine soul. Now, that divine soul, of course, the fact that we can have those um, emotions are because they are fed something. What are they fed? An understanding of the mind. As we know, the intelligence of Chabad, Chochmah Bina Vedas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge is what feeds the the, the um, seven emotions that give them and propel them into self-expression. So, what are the three aspects of the divine soul's intelligence? Chachma, the source of intellect. Is the source of intellect to apprehend and, and appreciate God. It's the source of intellect. It actually transcends it. It is the capacity of the mind to uh, connect ultimately in, in through it to then bring it into Bina and to understanding and to contemplate the um, our connection to God. God's realness and the world and that is through bringing it into a down across and deep right in other words all of the details of the uh, the point of of a teachings let's say and to be able then to plummet it bring it down bring it across into many particulars 
that we can deduce one idea from another idea because we understand it so fully. So much so that funneled through Chachma Bina, then it brings it to Das. An awareness of, of godliness in such a real way that then through Das it brings us, it funnels it into the emotions that brings us to um, a, an awareness of God that it should be felt in the heart, that felt in the or expressed in the seven different powers of the emotional makeup of our heart, as we explained, of of our soul, and that will you know lead us to a love and awe of God. Love the two levels, one the greater level that say delight in God, the lower level which is. Um, that that's an appreciation that the the true nature of things is um, is the is God's spark that animates it, and, that, and that's what we are drawn towards. And um, and to a sense of respect, fear, in the presence of God, or the higher level of totally not feeling your own awareness not to such a, a place that you don't even have a sense of self-awareness and as we explain that's really a gift from above so das brings vest itself into can bring into both types of so das is the funnel that takes what we understand and brings it to the emotions in two ways one, it funnels directly from what you're aware intellectually and brings it to the heart. And another, so it connects mind to heart. That's what Das does. That's the concept of Das is connecting. But Das also connects between Chokhmah and Bina. And the higher level is that what you know in Chokhmah is a reality in Bina, that they are bound together. That's a hard one. That's like maybe the very lofty, righteous souls are bound up in such a way. In other words, it's like the idea of uh, they're never once by um, on, by a poor infirmary and said a lot of l'chaim. And he just told the story that someone said it, that he once also said a lot of l'chaim. And he went like this over his head and um, in, a, in just that moment the effect of the Lachayim is totally like nullified, totally gone. And he explained because when a person has a sense of fear, if they're drunk, if they're really frightened, the drunkenness leaves you. So here he went, just went like this and others because, you know, usually you'd have to meditate you know, upon, upon, you know, in order to arouse a fear you know a sense of god's presence but in chachma it's already there that the point is there that in that brief moment of just running his hand over his forehead um is able to generate that sense of awe why because the higher level of das connects not to the emotions but it connects that the seminal point of of chachma is immediately um, connected to Bina in a way that it just creates a reality in that moment, not something you need to process, right? Usually we need to process things. I know I need to process things in order that I can bring it to, into my heart and to, you know, to deal with whatever I got to deal with. So I gotta, it takes me time. And that's Das. Das is when you're focused, um, let's say, on, on something, an issue, a problem, uh, you know, a relationship that, that is a, a difficulty. And so you're taking that which you are, and you're trying not to let your emotions control you. So you're trying to take it with your mind and, and process it and understand it and, and, and deal with it, you know, appropriately. So you're doing it in, in what you understand, take it into into dust to make it real for you in order that it can bring you into to emo, an emotion, right? 
that you can sense it and feel it but it takes time it's not simple that that's the lower level of das right to connect um right to be able to take what you know and to bring it into your heart and make it you know heartfelt the the higher level of das is the chachma has the awareness in a transcendent form right has the bittle has the self-abnegation to its source in in the divine that it needs now to bring it into detail into funnel it into bina that it should have an understanding and that, that, that and that's what we usually do and therefore it takes time to really you know unpack it to understand it and then bring it to your heart but the higher level is able to take that and bring it into bina instantaneously like i said and what they ever did like that instantaneously um that it's affecting because it's bringing a union between chokhmah and bina in a way that changes reality <laughs> that concludes the 15th letter so the alternative wraps up and says well that or in summary from my flesh shall i behold god so now that we have an understanding of our the makeup of our soul this gives us some measure of understanding of the supernal spheres the divine attributes above and god how he conducts the world how he literally conducts his world so now we have a bit of an understanding okay now if you have questions please ask we did this you know something that is like very powerful and needs a lot of um a lot more shall we say introduction or you know involvement in but it's beautiful Okay. I don't see any questions. I hope I explained this well enough. Not that there shouldn't be questions, so <laughs> still, still ask. Don't be bashful. Two question marks before. Thank you, Julia. Mm-hmm. Yes, Jim, very true. All right. Amazing. You're all amazing. As always. Rambam coming up. By the way, my wife has a class tonight for women on the regular Zoom. Do join us. Surely. I don't know what you mean, changing. The Judaism. Okay. All right, folks. I'm Rabbi Rani Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Gedeshi. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Have an amazing, wonderful day. And a wonderful Chai Elo, the 18th of Elo, birthday of the, Al- of the Al Shem Tov and the Alter Rebbe, our teacher of Tanya. Um, just means a, a special day to rededicate ourselves to the learning of Tanya and to allow it to invigorate everything about us. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>